Oh, 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 what has happened there? Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop here with another Arrows vs Armour 2 film. None of the other crew are here because this has been done several weeks after, well, we all broke up and went home. We've been looking at the edit. And the thing is, with the main film, it was always going to answer questions, but raise others. And in fact, we raised questions in the main film that never really got answered. So this one, having looked at the edit, we're going to come back and we're going to look at three specific things. We're going to look at getting arrows through the sights and the breaths of the helmet. We're going to look at impacts on the aventail again, and we are going to look at impacts on the arm, particularly the lower arm. Now we didn't, in our shooting, get an arrow exactly on a breath hole. We didn't get one exactly in the eye slits. We're going to try for that today because you know, the, the French knights were worried about what would happen. But if we shoot all the arrows at the helmet, they are going to get completely destroyed. So we're going to do that test last. The middle test we're going to do today is going to be looking at the neck defences. Now this Aventail here is incredibly tough. It really is. And it got compromised, I think, twice during the main film, just over here, but nothing front and centre. Now one of the ways that this works is it absorbs the energy of the impact by basically moving and you're having to drive the whole thing back. But what that means is this is one of the very few areas on a body where blunt force trauma really could be an issue. So the question is, if you get an arrow strike straight front and centre, does it go through? Because I don't think we actually managed to do that. But the other is it moves out the way. Behind there is your Adam's apple. How much damage is going to be done to that? So we've devised a little test here. We're under our male collar, under our standard, just revealed there is an egg. Will it break? Will it not? I don't know. Is it an exact analogue for, for an Adam's apple? No, it's not. But it's going to be indicative of if a strike, if the energy of a strike, if the, this whole set of armour gets pushed in. But of course, under the Aventail, which is tough as heck, you have got this male standard. Now this male here is all what's called four in one. That's what we're used to seeing as male. But they can do it more protective, especially around places like the neck. And here, you have six in one. Now look at the way that moves. You can tell that's not your regular male. And the other test that we really want to look at is how resistant the arm armour is. Now obviously if I'm going for that I've got the breastplate behind. Now this breastplate in fact is not the arrows versus armour one. This is one made by my great friend Ash for another TV job that I did. The original arrows versus armour one has gone as a gift for one of the, uh, one of the backers. So we're going to take that off and then the foam and the male are going to take the suffering, not the breastplate, and my arrows will live. And that will then allow us to do the neck defences and then the head. I'm down on the range now for the first of these tests, looking at shooting the lower arm. But obviously I've got my longbow simulator here. Yes, it's a crossbow. Go and have a look at the foundation films we've done for Arrows vs Armour 2. We set Joe Gibbs shooting these weight arrows, exactly the same arrows, I've just converted them for this bow, and this bow, side by side. They're basically almost identical, and that means that we can use this, when Joe's not here, to replicate his shooting. Now I've stripped off Ash's breastplate here, I've stripped off all the helmet and stuff, because I'm shooting in this area here. This is going to be interesting, because those arms are thin, and I want to know what these arrows do to them. Oh, lovely. Oh, and it's in. Lovely. So we're going to go again, because that was in, but I think it might have actually missed his arm. And that won't do at all. Oh, lovely. Pretty much the same place. Now we've managed to get two arrows straight into the forearm. That is clear as day. I'm going to have a go up here. But the thing is, that shooting is exactly why the simulator is fantastic. Because Joe is not here, yet I can shoot the same weight arrows at the same speed he does. And the results are comparable to what he would achieve. Bounced off. That was just above the elbow, I think. And that, I think, we'll do on this test. Let's go and have a look, because some interesting things have been going on. Concluding this part of the film, we can see clearly that those two arrows have gone through the arm armour. 
but it is only one millimeter thick. But arm armor often was that thin. It really was. That one probably misses flesh. That one drew blood. But then we have these ones here going through one and a half millimeter plate. Neither of them have penetrated fully, but both of them have left gouges and spikes on the inside of the armor. They are going to catch on this arm roll here. And again, this one here, that one has penetrated two plates of one mil, hasn't gone through, probably wouldn't have drawn blood, nasty bruise. Yes, but it's done the same thing again. It's almost riveted those two plates together with interlocking teeth as it's pushed the metal through. All of this has reduced his ability to move his right arm. His purpose is to fight and he can no longer fight effectively, even though he has one relatively superficial wound. But then you can also ask yourself, why hasn't it gone in as deeply as you would expect? The foundation films were shooting against 1.2 millimeter and 1.5 millimeter plate. And these arrows were going far deeper than this. But there is a fundamental difference here. That was a comparative test. It was not armor. This is armor. This has some movement in the arm, has some movement in the body. It has shaped plate. It has movement to the plate when you strike it. All of these things expend energy. The arrow strikes, carrying a chunk of energy with it. It strikes and it now has to move plate. It has to move the arm and it's giving up its energy into doing that and to not penetrating the plate. And of course there is male below it as well. But the male actually is not that resistant to arrows. We've seen that. So really, this is what is happening here is the shape of the plates, the fact that there's some mobility, some give. It is taking energy out of the system, reducing the penetration of the arrows. However, has the ability of this man to fight been massively compromised? Yes, it has. And now for the next part of our test, where we're going to be looking at the neck area here. So we're going to put the breastplate back on the head and the neck defenses, because that all interrelates to itself. But it's that is our target area of interest. We know from our previous tests that that Aventel is not quite invulnerable, but it is tough as heck. But the question is, if you strike here over the top of the larynx, the Adam's apple, can you hit with enough force that it manages to push the Aventel and the standard collar in enough to do damage to his throat? Or at least what looks to be the case. Let's find out. Stay. Lovely. Oh, <laughs> I love it when they do that. Oh, I love it. Ah, oh, yes. Brilliant. That is perfect. Clearly a great deal of damage has been done here. We're going to open up and have a look to see if anything has happened to the egg, but we have holes all the way through this mail. Now, Joe definitely uh, compromised the mail a couple of times on this side and the padding beneath. And I think maybe on this side too, it's been mended since then. But these ones are right in. So here, that is through the padding, just a little bit, maybe half inch, 12 millimeters, something like that. This one again, straight through the padding and into the shoulder. We'll have a look at the mail underneath, see what that's done. And that was into the archery foam I can feel. I don't know if it's gone through any of the mail, anything else, we're going to find out. But that absolutely means that his Aventail is not invulnerable. Now I'm just picking out 
some of the rings here because this often tells you something about the mechanism of destruction of the male. Curiously, in this case, all of them have failed on the rivet. But that may well be because this is two millimetre wire. This is heavy. And so, of course, the weakest part is the rivet. On thinner wire, it's often the wire that will break. Let's open them up and see what's going on inside. You can see here on the inside of the aventail, lots of holes straight through. And now here, that was through the aventail, through the padding and through the standard collar. Interesting. And one very, very smashed egg. That is quite fascinating. So in fact, this hole here was through the aventail, through the padding, through the standard in the four to one, not the six to one, and into the archery foam and you saw how deep it went. That's where you put your head down. And then we have our egg. I don't know if that was a point impact, a penetration through the aventail, or whether it was just a good hard smack, blunt force trauma. But that throat, that Adam's apple, that larynx, has been heavily compromised by these arrows. Now, a very important consideration here is that clearly that aventail has been compromised by the arrows. But then don't forget about this time, armour was changing a lot on the field of battle. Back plates are not in for most people at this period. Lower abdomen plates, not in for a lot of people at this period. Clearly, you're going to want them. But couch lances start to come in as well. So the aventail, not going to be as good around your neck as plate is. But the other thing is, plate will allow ricochets, will allow glancing blows. If you imagine a lance coming in, which clearly is going to compromise an aventail, we can see that now. But you can imagine catching on the side of an aventail, on the side here, just ripping the guy's head around. You don't want that. And that really gives you an argument to start moving towards plate around the neck and not the male, however good or poor it may be. The, av the aventail has been good defence. It is not clearly in vulnerable defence. And now we're just going to put every last arrow we have, trying to get it into the breaths, into the eye slots. See what happens. Aventail. Oh! Oh, 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 what has happened there? I'm going to carry on in a minute, but this is fabulous. So this arrow there, quite clearly, has made for a bad day inside that helmet. That arrow didn't actually hit in the eye slot. It hit just above, and there's a gouge here. And then what has happened, I'm guessing here, but the shaft is broken and that has hit the eye slit and gone through. The actual arrowhead didn't. And if we open up, so we've got that much wood poking out on the inside. And in fact, it even hit the lens of our GoPro, I think, by the look of it. GoPro lived. What a fabulous result. <laughs> you know, I'm going to keep going.
Well, that's our final test that we're going to do on this particular film. And it has been fantastically interesting. So we've used up every single arrow from the Arrows vs Armour backers on Kickstarter. So thank you, guys. That's the one we all wanted. But it didn't actually happen in quite the way we had envisaged. Because the arrow strike was actually above the boxing around the eyes. And it closed it. It closed it there. Skidded off. And then the arrow shaft broke, presumably. And that is what went through there. But then again, this second one here, that's under, and the boxing has done a perfect job, absolutely perfect job, of stopping the arrow rising up and skidding into the eye slit. Brilliant. But it has absorbed the energy of the arrow. It's bent in. And actually, the vision through this helmet is appalling at the best of times. And now that eye slit has been closed in there and closed in there, and you've got a whopping big splinter in. Really disabling if you're trying to function. Then we have this one. That was one of the early shots. That struck directly on a breath hole but it's where the helmet is beginning to thin off. So these ones, I would say, would be invulnerable. This one, it didn't go through, but not that far from going through. And again, this one here, this actually struck not on a hole directly, but just to one side, but it, it impacted on the hole and that allowed the arrow to perhaps go a bit deeper than you thought it should. And then this one is interesting. Not what we were going for on this one, but that has gone through the Aventail, the padding, and we're going to open it up and have a look because I think it might well have gone through the standard as well of the six to one. You can enjoy this film as a standalone one on its own, but of course it's one of a whole series in the Arrows vs Armour 2 films. I don't know, there's maybe seven or eight of them by now. Go check them out, go watch them. They all cover fantastic different areas like this, but then also there's the big Arrows vs Armour 2 film where we shoot the heck out of this thing with Joe Gibbs and his 160 pound longbow. And that final shot through the Aventail, and just above the standard collar into his throat. That was the end, the end.